Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today's video is going to be my faves and fails for September of 2018. Wait, I feel like I have a little fur. Oh yeah, there it is. Why? Every time I hit the record button, there's like a little fuzzer on my lip or on my nose or on my eyelashes. You know, every month I try a lot of makeup, hair care, skin care, everything pertaining to beauty. And then I like to report back to you guys on what I used and how I liked it. A lot of the stuff in this video came from a video that I put up on Friday that was trying all new kind of higher end makeup. It was collab with Nordstrom. When I was auditioning makeup for the <laughs> video, I ordered a whole mess of stuff that other YouTubers and people were raving about, like new releases. And when I got them in and tried them, they just didn't work. One is the NARS Climax Mascara that everyone is raving about. And the other one is the NARS um, eyeshadow primer that has been reformulated and re-released and it's in like a couple of different shades. So I thought that this would be awesome, especially for older lids, you know, where you might have some freckling or some veins or whatever up there that you want to disguise it. So you could actually get a flesh tone and have a nice base going there. Both of these were epic fails. Like this guy is really pretty when you first put it on and it really builds like big luscious looking lashes. But within a couple hours, it is flaking all over your face. Well, maybe not all over your face, but it was flaking all over my face. And that's why I jettisoned that, didn't use it in the video, but I was so shocked. But I did buy a different mascara for that video. And that was this one from Chanel. This is their Inimitable Intense Mascara. And this was the bomb. I only put on one coat in the video and my lashes look so full and long and curled and everything and it didn't flake all day. So that was a really great find. So really loved this, but sadly really hated this. Then the other NARS thing that I mentioned is the Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. This just does not go on my eyelids right. It went on so patchy and weird. It would be like sheer and then like have all these like just just little like clumps everywhere but coating my entire eyelid. It just is so uneven, the coverage. And it didn't really seem to cover anything like veins or freckles. I got it in light. Maybe I should have gotten a slightly darker color because that is pretty darn light. But I thought for my eyelids, especially if I want, you know, like my lighter kind of pop color to show up, I need it to be lighter. I mean, it just looked crusty. Like I didn't even want to put eyeshadow over it. I did put eyeshadow on over it just to test it out and it didn't look good. Like you could see that crustiness through the eyeshadow on this. And I had shown you a couple months ago in another Faves and Fails, this eyelid primer from CoverGirl. This is called the Lid Lockup. And I think this is so much better than this. Um, and it's what, $8 and this is a lot of dollars. <laughs> so this NARS was an epic fail and I can recommend the CoverGirl Lid Lockup. That's the same kind of a thing with you know, the doe foot applicator. But of course, you know, my all time favorite currently is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance 24 hour crease, anti-crease eyeshadow primer. This one is awesome. So if you're looking for an eyeshadow base, try this one, try the CoverGirl, try anything but the NARS, like don't waste your money on this. It was just not good. So those two NARS products are going in the bad bin. Another thing that I auditioned for that video was this Chanel Rouge Allure lip paint. It's like their matte lip paint. And this is such a gorgeous color. This one is in, what color are you? I think it's warm beige. It's gorgeous fall color. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be the perfect fall color for this tutorial. I love it. I put it on, I wore it around. Oh my gosh, this is so drying. But I also picked up another Chanel lip product. It is their Jumbo Longwear Lip Crayon in Warm Rosewood, number 21. And this is so good. I love this. The color is kind of similar to this guy, but a little bit lighter. This one is the lip crayon, and this one is the matte lip tint. And the lip crayon is just such a beautiful color for fall. And it's so moisturizing. I love it. And it's not matte. You know, when you get a little bit older, sometimes the matte things can really not look great on your lips. Don't get me wrong. I'm not making any rules because you know, I am not into rules that limit us. If you love a matte lip color and you look great in it, then you rock it. But sometimes I just feel like mm, it makes me look it makes my lips look a little bit older instead of a little more youthful. So I love this because it made them look really plump and youthful. So that was a hit with me this month. 
Another couple of faves from that video, then I'll stop with that video. They're Charlotte Tilbury products, and I found, find her brand to be very hit or miss, but I had picked actually a couple of winners for that video. One is the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so gorgeous. I bought this guy in the shade 4 medium, but this is so pretty. It's like a big bottle of a highlighter, but you can use it everywhere. If you're going on vacation, this is a fantastic thing to take with you. You can put it on like your shoulders, your collarbones, use it on your cheeks. You would have to check your luggage to bring this, but it's just so beautiful and it looks so gorgeous on the skin. By the end of the video, I had gone so crazy with it. I was like, oh my God, I love this. I put it on my cheeks, I put it on my eyelids, I put it on my eyeshadow, I put it on my nose, my chin, my collarbones. I had it everywhere. I was like bathed in this and I was a golden glowing goddess. But then of course the glowingness was too much for me and I was like, oh God, too much glow. So of course then I had to powder it over. Then I went in with this. This is her Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I have this in the shade 2 medium and I put it on with a damp beauty blender in a few places and I really liked how it kind of took down the shine where I had overdone it. But I gotta say at the end of the day, some of the places where I put it on like under my eyes and uh, kind of down the sides of my cheeks and on my chin. They looked really dry, so I felt like this was a little bit drying. But what saved the day on this product for me with it was that I had also put it on my nose, and I have had such a hard time getting foundation to last on my nose. You know, my nose is kind of red, and it always shows through after like six or seven hours. Like, I feel like my nose is even getting a little red now. Um, so I put it on there and at the end of the day, it was like the first time in a long time that I didn't have like a red nose showing through. So if you have rosacea or red nose like I do, this is a great powder to get for that. It's convenient. You can carry it around in your purse and it's really nice at kind of mattifying and blurring pores, but I did find it just the slightest bit drying when I used it. And especially at the end of the day, not that anyone could see that my skin looked dry, but when I looked at it in my up close mirror, I was like, ooh, that looks just a little bit dry, a little bit like more on the cakey side than I would like it to. So, all right, um, second to last thing from that video, sorry about this, but anyway, this Too Faced Natural Face Palette. The blush that I used in that video was this guy down here for like a ruddier kind of, you know, September fall look. Since then, I've used this blush, which is just beautiful, but for like almost a no blushy blush look, blush slash highlighter, this guy, oh my gosh, so beautiful. So I'm wearing that one today. It's kind of like a pale, pale pink with like a gold iridescence to it. And so when you put it on your cheek, it gives you that like little bit of blushiness but also just this gold, beautiful flush. Just that one alone as a really subtle blush slash highlighter is beautiful. And I really love the um, two bronzers that you get in there as well. I've been using this one a lot and it blends so, so beautifully. And that is a really, really pretty palette. And let's see what else. I did have a successful Foundation Friday this month. I had tried the CoverGirl Matte Made Foundation and I really, really like this. I think probably of all the matte foundations that I've tried in the last, like over the summer, how many matte foundations have come out? So, so many. I think this is my like favorite out of all of them. It comes in 40 shades, so it's very inclusive. It kept my oils controlled all day. I felt like it was smoothing. I felt like it looked really good. Like, it wasn't perfect, but of the things that I've tried from high end to drugstore, this was like the best one so far. I do have a couple more that I'm going to try before this whole matte thing is over. So one of the foundations that I tried to try this month, but ended up not doing a video on is the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. I actually have to return it because this one has defective packaging. I mean, the packaging is super cute and then it gives you like this little place for your foundation to go and then you bounce your Beauty Blender into it and it's got a lock on this side so you can't accidentally press it when you don't mean to. So anyway, the day I was trying to use it, I'm like pumping, 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 pumping some more, pumping some more. You know, I'm just a counter, so I start counting. Got up to 200 pumps, still no foundation coming out of this thing. So I would like to be able to do a foundation Friday on this one, but it won't come out of the bottle. Hopefully they're not all like that, but I would be curious to see if anyone else has tried it and if theirs didn't come out as well. 
So I've got a couple of anti-aging wands to show you in this one. Unfortunately, I think they're both fails. Neither of them are faves. One of them is the Nurse Jamie Uplift Facial Wand. This is like a rolling device that you roll on your skin and it's supposed to give you an instant uplift. And the other one is this Spencer Barnes LA Neck, Chin and Jawline Instant Sculpting Wand. So we've got two wands that are supposed to sculpt your face and neither of them sculpted my face, I gotta say. I did a video on this one, so I'll put the link to that up here. You can go over and take a look at that if you were curious about this. This is $89 for, um, I think it's less than three quarters of an ounce of cream, uh, but it's in this giant package with like this, you know, rollerball dispenser. You know, it's one of those film former things and the film formers can work. This one just didn't on me. Then I had picked this wand up in the, Nordstrom sale over the summer because it came bundled up with like a face mask and oh, a face mask overlay thing. I put this kind of in the category of the jade rollers, the Kansa wands, all those things that you're just supposed to like massage your face with. I mean, there is something to be said for a facial massage and for lymphatic drainage and all that stuff. I actually had a really sleepless night and I came down and I was like, oh, perfect day to try this to see if it alleviates my eye bags. <laughs> I rolled each eye for like five minutes and rolled the rest of my face and you know, shocker. Everything looked exactly the same when I was done. My hand started cramping holding it. I was like, ow, this hurts. I don't see any difference. It certainly doesn't do anything to like lift my skin or anything like that. My daughter kept coming in and rolling it on her face and being like, that feels nice. I'm like, no, yeah, it does feel nice when you use it. These little tourmaline, you know, bumps are cool to the touch. As far as rubbing your face with things, I think the one thing that you can rub your face with that actually works is of course the new face because you know I use that every day and I think the difference is that that actually shoots electricity into your skin and you know your skin actually has its own electrical current and I think there's something to that electrical current it's like a microcurrent that helps your skin cells to have more energy and to do their thing better things like this that you just rub it I don't know not for me didn't like it going in the box Goodbye to that. What else did I have here? Oh, a sunscreen, of course, you guys know I always am trying sunscreens. And um, just because it's September doesn't mean that you should stop using your sunscreen. Just want to put that out there. Sunscreen is a 365 day a year product. So I tried two sunscreens this month. One is a fave, one is a fail. Who wants to guess which is which? It's Super Goop and Paula's Choice. Which one was good? It was the Paula's Choice. This one is so, so good. And you know what? You guys had recommended this one, so thanks for recommending this one. So these are both all mineral sunscreens. The Paula's Choice sunscreen is the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen. This has antioxidants and resveratrol, which you know I love for skincare. This is 13% zinc oxide sunscreen, so really good UVA and UVB protection. Then the one from Super Goop, this is their 100% mineral matte sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 40, 17% zinc oxide and 0.7% titanium dioxide. They're both tinted. Here's the Paula's Choice sunscreen and here's the Super Goop. So you can see this one is definitely a better match for my skin tone than this one, but they both rub in pretty much invisibly. The Paula's Choice works so well under makeup. No settling in wrinkles, no settling in pores, didn't affect the wear, makeup looked beautiful. Unfortunately, the complaint I have about this one, if you're gonna say matte on the label, it better be matte on my face. And this one was not matte on my face. This one was actually shinier than this one. It's hard to make a mineral sunscreen matte. I will give you that. But my makeup didn't go well on over it. It made my makeup settle into wrinkles, settle into pores, it made it go on sheerer, it made it wear off quicker. I felt like I looked oilier in the afternoon. So this one was just kind of an epic fail. Sorry, super goop, I tried. I mean, it certainly will protect your skin from the sun, so you could definitely use it, but as far as the aesthetics of it, the Paula's Choice was hands down the winner. Uh, I just love sharing my successes and failures with you guys every month. I wish they could all be successes, but 
<laughs> what are you going to do? There's a lot of products out there. And just because something was a failure for me doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be a failure for you. Um, so if you love something that I didn't like, it's okay. I'm sure that you um, hate some things that I love, right? So um, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. So I want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with me today. And I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. So take care everybody. Bye-bye.